you had almost one existential crisis. In effect, somebody tried to take you over uh, yeah. a while ago, Broadcom, uh, that went away. Um, and uh, I assume you don't expect anybody to try to take you over it again anytime soon. That's not that's not what we're what we're thinking about now. But you were also trying to make a, uh, an acquisition, NXP, a uh, another company based in Europe. Um, are you looking at other big acquisitions now, or you're happy with where you are now generally? Well, I think we're we're pleased to have the balance sheet that gives us strategic, you know, flexibility, including the ability to take advantage of some opportunities. And I think, uh, like anyone. Uh, you know, we look we look at the um, the world and we're saying, wow, we have we have a, a, a great um, roadmap of technologies. Is there a way to accelerate that? So I think everyone's uh, first priority is get through this, make sure the company gets through it. But I think there's going to be some opportunity on the other side. And if you have the balance sheet to do that, like we do, um, that's a good thing. So is there anything you wish you had done during this crisis you hadn't haven't yet done or or plan to do? Boy, you know, that's a um, this crisis to me has really been more about um, managing the psyche of the organization versus figuring out what to do. And um, I think, uh, you know, fingers crossed, I feel like um, we've been in a pretty good uh, situation so far. Now, we're all in the adrenaline phase where it feels like we can do anything for as long as we want to be able to right. do it. I think that's going to wear off. Uh, and so now the question is sort of how do we work long term when um, when we still have to do the right things for for the pandemic, but it, but it's not as uh, the adrenaline's not there. Well, let me ask.